two parts. Jack Spade back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, for another leather adventure. And today, on this episode, we're going to do some old antique trunk handles. So, uh, I've got a customer that has an old antique trunk, and I'll put a picture up here of what it looks like. And the handles have uh, just disintegrated off of it. So it doesn't have any handles anymore. And they would like to replace those leather handles. So uh, I measured the trunk itself where the handles go in. And made a little pattern here that I'm going to have to cut out. And that's where we'll start. So come on in and let's get started. As I said, I did measure the trunk and uh, where the handles were. So I made a little pattern here and just on some card stock, thicker paper. And uh, I'm going to cut that out on my self-healing mat. And I only need one of them. I'm going to make two handles, one for each side of the trunk, but I only need one pattern. And uh, most of the time when I make patterns, uh, especially for holsters or knife sheaths or something like that, um, I use poster board. So it's quite a bit more rigid than this index paper. But it works. You just have to uh, be careful when you're tracing on your leather. And on this particular pattern, we could either use the inside or we can trace around the outside of this part. Doesn't matter, either one. And I'm going to use this piece that I just cut out and actually trace around it. So I'll set my pattern material aside and grab my leather. And what I've got is some saddle skirting um, that it's a big piece of scrap that I had left. And... Uh, if you look, it's real thick. It's probably, I'm going to say, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. 3 sixteenths to a quarter. So it's pretty thick. It's going to be very durable. Um, so this is what I'm going to use for these handles. Um, I could square it up before I start, but since I have... Uh, a pattern. Uh, I'm not going to have to actually measure it or anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and and put this pattern on the leather itself. And then I'm just going to trace the pattern. And again, it does help if you're a little ambidextrous. I'm naturally left-handed. But normally for cutting or uh, for drawing, anything like that, I can use both hands. And then I'm just going to put these side by side. Well, now I'm going to put them, see if I can get them end for end here. It looks like I can barely get that end for end. That way I'm not going to use so much of my material. I won't cut a big hunk out of it here. So it'll allow me to save more of the scrap piece 
it's such nice thick leather you don't want to waste any um, so I've got my pattern drawn out on my leather got two pieces we'll end up with two handles so uh, I can use a straight edge again uh, a lot of times I'll flip this has got a cork back keeps it from sliding uh, and stainless steel but I'll sometimes I'll flip that over so that that cork back when I'm cutting my leather doesn't uh, make it stand off of the leather so if I flip it over I can get my stainless steel uh, ruler right against the leather and these cuts I should be able to make all the way down and then cut this in half because I did make it end for end and again when I'm cutting my leather especially thick leather I'm not trying to cut through the entire thickness of the leather on the first pass and this is not a brand new blade this blade has been used a couple of times So there's my first cut. I think I'll go ahead and cut this off at the end down here. That way I can work with a smaller piece. I can put this back in my scrap barrel. this end off just going by a pattern line then I can flip my ruler over put it on the other line cut now after that first cut you can remove your ruler or your straight edge because you've already got a groove in there to follow if you want to do that if you got a good sharp knife your knife will follow that groove that you just cut in there or you can continue to use your straight edge and that's a personal preference whatever you would like to do now as the more you deeper you get your cut the more passes you make the more natural that knife blade is going to want to stay right in that groove especially on this real thick leather again you're talking about this saddle skirting that's about a quarter of an inch thick so very heavy duty so there's scrap as you can see 
I didn't end up with much scrap at all. So I'll take this piece and I've got my center mark where I'm going to cut it. And then I want these to have somewhat of a finished look to them. So, uh, as you can see, I end up with two of the exact same pieces. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my larger beveler, beveling tool, and I probably ought to strop that, polish it up a little bit. And this is just a scrap piece of leather with some jeweler's rouge on it. And what that does is that really polishes that tip, that cutting tip. And then I can bevel these edges. So it's pretty straightforward on, on something like this. Um, that's square or rectangle. You're just going to go around all four sides. And I will flip it over and do the back side also. That's going to give me kind of a beveled, well, it'll give me a, a beveled edge on both sides, front and back, but what what I'll do is I'll take my uh, I'll take a uh, get that off there take a burnishing tool and I'll put just a little bit of moisture on that edge and then I'll burnish that and that'll kind of round that off and make it slick. It'll really set that off. It, it'll give it a good professional finished look instead of just being a squared off edge like this. And you can see compare those two with the bevel on the top instead of the squared off edge. You can see a difference already. So let me bevel this second piece. Also if you had any marks from marking your pattern on your leather the beveler will take those marks off. And this this leather is real thick and it's it's pretty tough. Um, you can probably hear that beveler cutting that leather. And most of the time uh, the leather I use, you don't, you don't hear that. So it's it's pretty tough leather. It should last for years and years. So there's all my beveling scraps. I'll push them aside. I'll strop my beveling tool again before I hang it back up, just so I know it's. Good and got a good polished edge on it. And then now I've got my straps that have been cut and beveled. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a burnishing tool 
and a little bit of water on a sponge. And again, this is just tap water. And I just want to barely get it damp or moist right on the edge. I'm not trying to case the leather itself or for any reason, but right on the edge. I just want to get it a little moist and what that will do is that will help with burnishing. That will help roll over that edge a little bit. So I'll do both pieces. Just barely getting that edge moist. Trying to keep it away from the front and the back as much as possible. Doesn't take much moisture in that sponge to do that. So I've got my edges moist now. And then what I'm going to do is give that just a minute or so to uh, start drying out and I'm going to take my burnishing tool and I'm going to burnish the edges of that. Uh, the ends are going to be a little more difficult but they're going to be hidden inside the trunk handle anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this um, and you can see this has a wide spot here, then it narrows down, then it narrows down a little more. Uh, depending on the thickness of the leather and how rounded you want that to be, is which one of those grooves you would use. Now, again, I'm not pushing real hard. The key is uh, the speed not so much the pressure. So I don't know if you can see, but see how that's rounded that off and also made it slick? See the light shining off of that? That's not the water that's causing that, that's the friction from that burnishing tool. So what that does is that gives it a nice slick, round, finished edge instead of it being a square or beveled edge and I do have some uh, burnishing tools that I've made to fit in my uh, cordless drill for larger jobs um, and I've I just went and bought different types of uh, drawer knobs know like uh, pulls drawer pulls and you'll notice most of those are made where they have a shoulder on them and different drawer pulls have different size shoulders and then I just put a screw with a nut on the back of it and I can put that in my drill and then run that back and forth so it's spinning as I'm moving back and forth and it does do a pretty good job but normally I don't do that unless I'm on a little bit larger job and I'm sure I'll be using that in other videos so there's that edge you can see it's all rounded and slicked up and again I, I do want to do these ends but they're not as important as the top and the bottom of the handle but doesn't look like it's going to take much to burnish those. And to kind of round it off a little more, um, if you just kind of pivot that around that edge as you're burnishing, that'll round that off even more. So there's one that's completely done. I'll grab the second one. And it's going to be obviously a little bit drier than the first one because it's set there while we burnished 
the first one. So it probably won't take as long. There's one edge already done. So it just gives it you know, some of the stuff I, I do, like the guitar strap that I just finished, um, I didn't do any burnishing at all. So it just depends on what look, what kind of look you're going for. Um, on this, I just kind of want a little more finished look, and it will give a little bit of different look to the uh, die that we put on there too. The die is gonna soak into the leather a little bit different where it's been burnished. Done with the burnishing tool. And there's my two straps. So the next thing I'm going to do is put some dye on these. And once I dye these straps, um, they'll be finished. So uh, let's go ahead and put some dye on there and we'll wrap this project up. I'm going to get out my trusty dyeing mat or cardboard here. As you can see I've done a lot of dyeing on this. Uh, I'll grab a pair of vinyl gloves. need to read the customers notes they want this light brown is the color they picked out so let me look there's light brown right there get a dauber and a plastic container put my dye in. So what I did was I actually went to the customer's home, um, measured, looked at the trunk, measured the trunk, uh, talked to the customer about how they wanted the handles done, and I took my uh, leather color sampler that I made, just a key ring and scrap pieces of leather. And then when I, like dark brown, black, there's buckskin. So just saddle tan, different colors so that they can choose what color dye they want on their project. So. I took that with me and they went through that and chose what color they wanted. So they chose light brown. So let's put some light brown in the cup. And again, I do use these clear throwaway little plastic cups or trays that you can get them at Dollar Tree. Uh, I either get the trays or the cups. Either one of them work great. So just go ahead and dob the die on there. 
make sure I get it covered completely. Then I'll do the edges. Now the edges, with them being uh, burnished, may come out just a little bit darker than the rest of it, but that's okay. Uh, it gives a little bit of two-tone effect, maybe, to it. And then I am going to dye the back side also. And that should soak into that. Remember, this is saddle skirt material, so it's real thick. So it's going to soak in there good. Then I am going to go over it lightly one more time on the front. Because it will do the same thing. It will soak in too. Then I'll set that one aside. And then I'll go to the second one. As you can see, it's not going to take much to uh, coat these. The unfinished side, like always, is going to soak up a lot more dye than the finished side of the leather. And then what you can do on that second coat, flip your dauber over to the dry side and just kind of spread that around a little bit. And if you get a little air to it, blow on it a little bit, that'll really soak in quickly. And it'll dry some of that uh, solvent out of that dye. So set those aside. They're both finished. Here's the first one we did. You can tell in the light it's already starting to lighten up to the light brown. At first when you put it on there it's going to be a little darker. But there's the edge. see it still has that nice shiny sheen to it and then what I'm going to do the last thing I'll do to these is uh, I will put some leather sheen on it and rub it out so what that'll do is that'll allow a little shine to come through it and it'll protect it. So I am going to get rid of this excess dye. I do not put my dye back into the bottle if I have any left. That's why I use these so I don't contaminate my dye for my next project. So let me get rid of this. Alright so I have a microfiber cloth you can do this with like a, I don't like to use paper towels because I don't like the paper flaking off the little pieces that flake off of it. Um, you let your pieces dry and you can see that the light brown's really coming out now. So I'll shake up my sheen, and this is fiber, Fibing's Leather Sheen. Protects and conditions leather with flexible, durable acrylic finish. So I've used this several times on several different projects, and I really like the effect you get. And again, it's, it's also helping to protect and condition it. Um, so let me show you a before. 
and then let, I'll show you after I get this sheen on there what it does. So I'll put a little bit of that actually right on my microfiber cloth and then I'm just going to wipe it on and it, it almost looks like milk is what it looks like when you put it on there and notice I'll just keep wiping it on I'm just going to put it on the finished side and the edges not the unfinished side and I just keep wiping it on there I, I don't re-wet my towel or anything I've got plenty in there. I'm just going to keep wiping it on. And it's coating that. With that sheen. With that product. I'll move to my next piece. Notice I keep turning it because I want to make sure that I get it coated from end to end really well. Then what I'll do is I'll go to a dry part of my microfiber towel or get a, a different one that I know is dry. And then I start buffing it. So, I'm bringing out the actual sheen or shine by buffing the liquid sheen that I put on there. So, I showed you the before, now here's the after. Look at the difference. So, it kind of gives it a shiny look. But what it does is it really protects it. So now it's fairly flexible, especially for leather that was a quarter inch thick. So flexible. It's protected now. And it's ready to be placed on the trunk. So I can get these to the customer and they can go ahead and install those on their antique trunk. There you have it. Another project done. And this was a completed project from start to finish in one video. You don't see that very often. So, uh, turned out nice. Customer's gonna love it. And I uh, thank you so much for coming and watching. Please come back and watch the next video to start a new project. So you want to come back and see what that's going to be. It's going to be pretty cool. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.